So a lot of us are interested in relationships and we think of being in a partner relationship when we bring up the word relationship. But there are many, many relationships. There's the relationships with, you know, Mother Nature. There's relationships within yourself. Um, there are relationships with uh, the society you're in, your community, your home, um, your other family members. You know, the list goes on. So I'm going to speak about relationships as most people first think about them. Relationships with like a, a love partner, a love interest partner, a special relationship, right? A special relationship is this person is with me all the time and this person uh, will love me all the time, make me feel good. Um, put butterflies in my heart and my stomach and you know that's what we are oftentimes thinking of you know look at the Disney films Cinderella um, S Snow White you know and they got married and happily lived happily ever after we've been kind of conditioned into responding to the word relationship with that kind of schematic, that kind of, you know, Prince Charming and Cinderella and happily ever after, or let's put it in more modern terms, you know, the movies of like um, boy meets girl and goes through difficulties and then they're like together forever. Even the ones that are beyond life, like in Ghost or I can't remember all the movies, but there are many movies of that too. And so there's this this kind of oh special relationship where it's the two of us, you know, the two of us. And it could be same gender or, you know, opposite genders. Um, there are movies that come out with the relationship with a dog, like that beautiful movie, A Dog's Purpose, um, and how that soul of that dog uh, returned to the to the the little boy when he was a grown man with his own little boy through his many incarnations. So there's um, and that was a profound love relationship there as well. So when we think of relationship as always an object outside of ourselves. Um, we can get into a kind of a, um, I, I want to use the right word that doesn't trigger people to like, oh, this is horrible or awful, because I wanted to say a victim mentality, which means that I'm dependent or a codependent mentality, let's say. Whatever this person on the outside does impacts my feeling of self, my feelings, my um, internal world, my emotions, my way of thinking, my whatever, whatever happens on the outside affects my experience of life and self. And what it, that mentality is, um, also missing out on the most important relationship, which is the relationship to self. Oh, what's the relationship to self there? Well, you know, there's many aspects of ourselves. There's the aspect of ourselves that is, you know, trying to make it in this physical world, take care of this body, experience the physical world. And then there's the aspect of ourself, which is like eternal, unlimited, soul spirit you might call it right there's an aspect of ourself that or a relationship that we also have with our higher self or our spirit guides for example these relationships are really about our eternal soul growth and when we keep that relationship with ourself with our internal self-observation knowing thyself 
then we're able to keep in a balance and a growth and a harmony and a flow. So when these relationships on the outside say certain words, act a certain way or not act a certain way, um, and we experience the feeling within based on our interpretation of what's happening on the outside, we give ourselves more information to know ourselves, right? Oh, I was really hurt by that person saying, um, I hope, instead of feeling good about it, right? What is that about? What, why, am I, why am I feeling, you know, bad about that? And then I ask the other person, well, what did you mean when you use the word hope? And the other person responds and says, oh, it's my warm, loving feeling of dreams fulfilled, right? That I wanted to share with you. And you respond, no, that's not what hope means. Hope means it's not here. It doesn't, it's, it's not happening. It's not here. Then this is an opportunity for you to look at what, what is the big story within myself that is running this concept of it's not happening, it's not here, it's not working, right? But if you're focusing on the other person having to respond in a different way in order for you to come back to your peace, then you've really disassociated from yourself. And it's an opportunity to really look at Okay, what is, what is the history? What is the legacy that I, that I come from? You know, what is it that um, <clears throat> I've experienced in my early childhood, most likely, that is giving me a picture of life that I keep painting over and over and over again, even though I'm looking for a different picture, right? You can't understand how to paint a different picture unless you really understand what picture you're painting now and make a choice to pick up a different color, to draw a different shape. And that's what we do when we choose our thoughts, our, uh, which usually trigger our emotions, right? And our interpretations, which is our thoughts as well, about what's happening, say, with another person. Um, so, I, um, I want to um, just bring this up about knowing thyself, how we relate in relationships is an opportunity for us to know ourselves more deeply for us to see things and to be able to make new choices, if we like. Um, our soul growth lies in our relationship with ourselves, in our self-observation, as we are interacting in these different relationships. And it's love is, it just is whether we're aware of it or not, we will always find what we're looking for. So if you want to feel love, look for the love. If you have some mechanism in thyself, in yourself, that wants to feel abandoned and victim is really what it is. Like you are, you are not... 100% responsible for your life, well, then you will. You will find something else out there that is controlling you or influence you or impacting you. And, and um, that's just how it is. Um, 
I'm looking for a way to close this video in a most uplifting, hopeful, and empowering way. And then I would say, when you feel the emotions of discomfort, thank them because they are your kind of warning system that's saying, you know, your thinking is off. And then you get to go back and look at your thinking, look at your thoughts, and then try other thoughts, try other ways of interpreting. Like, for example, take the opposite of the thought that created that uncomfortable feeling and play with that. You get to choose your thoughts. As you choose your thoughts, so your words, your action, and your life your destiny will follow. And that is how people can predict what is to come based on what people are choosing in their thoughts, their words, and their actions now. But that can change like that. That can change in an aha moment. Oh my goodness, I keep creating this frequency of... Um, loneliness and being alone, I can change that right now. I'm never alone. I have a relationship with myself on many, many levels. I have a rich family of self-expressions, self-experiences, and you can always feel love, always feel that joy, always feel surrounded. Hopefully this gave you some food for thought and empowerment.